through our Crossroads service uh, this 24th day of May. We are honored and excited that you have invited us into your home. And we're looking forward to sharing with you a brief word from the Lord. Again, as we go through the COVID-19, we certainly miss our church family, but we're excited in these moments that we get the opportunity to share a brief word and to be encouraged by what the Lord would have to say. So today, if you would like to start the reading with me, we will be in the book of Deuteronomy. Our subject today will come from Deuteronomy, and we will be in the first chapter, and we are going to read verses 1 through 8. And then from there, we will jump down to verses uh, 19 through about 32. Amen. And the word of the Lord says, These are the words Moses spoke to all Israel in the wilderness east of the Jordan, that is, in the Arabah, opposite Suf, between Paran and Tophel. Laban, Hazareth, and Dizahab. It takes 11 days to go from Horeb to Kadesh Barnea by the Mount Seir Road. In the 40th year, on the first day of the 11th month, Moses proclaimed to the Israelites all that the Lord had commanded him concerning them. This was after he had defeated Sihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon. And at Idra had defeated Og, king of Bashan, who reigned at Ashtaroth, east of the Jordan, in the territory of Moab. Moses began to expound this law, saying, The Lord our God said to us at Horeb, You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Break camp and advance into the hill country of the Amorites. Go to all the neighboring people in the Arab in the mountains, in the western foothills, in the Vigal, and along the coast to the land of the Canaanites and, and to Lebanon, as far as the great river that you were afraid. See, I have given you this land. Go in and take possession of the land that the Lord swore he would give to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to their descendants. And now I'll go to verse 19. Then as the Lord God commanded us, we set out from Horeb and went toward the hill country of the Amorites through all that vast and dreadful wilderness that you have seen. And so we reached Kadesh Barnea. Then I said to you, you have reached the hill country of the Amorites, which the Lord our God has given us. See, the Lord your God has given you the land. Go up and take possession of it as the Lord, the God of your ancestors told you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Then all of you came to me and said, let us send men ahead to spy out the land for us and bring back a report about the rock we are to take and the towns we will come to. The idea seemed good to me, so I selected 12 of them, one man from each tribe. They left and went up into the hill country and came to the valley of Eshcol and explored it, taking with them some of the fruit of the land. They brought it down to us and reported, it is good land that the Lord our God has given us. But you were unwilling to go up. You rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. You grumbled in your tents and said, the Lord hates us. So he brought us out of Egypt to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us. Where can we go? Our brothers have made our, house, our hearts melt in fear. For they said the people are stronger and taller than we are. The cities are large with walls up to the sky. We even saw the Amorites there. Then I said to you, do not be afraid. Do not be terrified of them. The Lord your God who is going before you will fight for you as he did for you in Egypt before your very eyes and in the wilderness. There you saw how the Lord your God carried you as a father carries his son. 
And all the way you went until you reached this place. But in spite of this, you did not trust in the Lord your God. In spite of this, you did not trust in the Lord your God. And if we have a subject today, that subject will be, you've been in this mountain long enough. You've been in this mountain long enough. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask now that I, as I have studied and I have read and I have prepared myself for this moment, only you can grant the word that gives life. Use me now in this moment to deliver this message to your people that we may hear it. Open our ears that we may hear what you have to say. Open our eyes that we may see the way in which you are calling us to go. I hide myself behind the cross. Lord, you be glorified in this moment. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You've been here long enough. So the children of Israel have found themselves at Mount Horeb. Mount Horeb being the place where they've come to after being rescued or delivered from Egypt. They had the experience of God as he parted the Red Sea and they walked through the Red Sea and they witnessed Pharaoh and his mighty army being destroyed. And along this journey, they began to walk and they murmured against God. And he provided manna for them in the desert and he provided uh, water for them that they would have to drink. And they saw the wonderful works of God. They had battles and the Lord came and delivered them and they rested at Mount Horeb, a time of rest that they stayed there for a year. The Bible says that it was one year that they stayed at Mount Horeb. And during this time, they had the opportunity to shake off some of the things that they had experienced while in Egypt. They had the opportunity to get to know the Lord, not just from what they heard, but God gave them the opportunity to settle down and get to know him. Not just by ear, but as, as Job said. Job said, I had heard the report, but now I have seen with my eyes. God granted the children of Israel in this moment the opportunity within this year that they stayed at home to get to know him. And it was in, after about a year that God said to them, through Moses, you have been here long enough. You've been in this mountain long enough. And I believe that is a message to us for the church today. We've been at the place of horror long enough. That is not an indictment. It's not an accusation. It's just, I believe, to be a point of fact that God is telling us, you've circled this mountain long enough. You've spent enough time getting to know me. I have revealed myself to you, and now it's time to go from getting to know me to getting on to the purpose that I have called you to. It's time to go from sitting in church. There's nothing wrong with it, but God said, I'm calling you now to move beyond praise and worship and to go into victory. Doesn't mean you don't praise along the way, but he says you've been in this mountain long enough. We have to move on to something else. As we face COVID-19, there is a world that is in need, in search of some sort of answer. And we know Christ is that answer. The God says, I'm sending you as the church out to be my ambassadors. You are the light of the world. You can't sit here at war any longer. It's time to move on. Scary thing to have to move on from horror. This is why God had to tell them it's time to go because it's an easy place to get stuck at. Horror was the place where I first come to know God. In the Bible, it's described as the mountain of God, Exodus 3 and 1. Horror was a place of provision to the Israelites. In Exodus chapter 17, we see at this place that they cried for water. And it was here that God instructed Moses to smite the rock and that water would come from it. So that God is telling him, I'm asking you to leave a place of provision. Or it was a place of promise. For it's here that God has promised the people that he would be their God. And if they would obey him, 
they will be to him as a prized possession. It is he that hold that is a place of revelation. It is the place where God has revealed himself to the children of Israel. The Bible says that Moses in Exodus chapter 19 took the people before the mountain of Horeb and he took them to meet the Lord. He was there that the Lord descended. He said, I'm not just going to speak through Moses, but I'm going to speak to the people so that they would hear me and get to know me. And Jermaine, to our message today, Horeb, Horeb, Mount Horeb was a place of instruction and preparation. Horeb was a place where God began to prepare the people for what lies ahead. For he knew that there were battles that would have to be fought. God knew that going into the promised land would require a complete trust in him. So it's during this time where he gave his laws. He made sure that the people understood what it would mean to follow him. He made sure that they understood how they were to move forward, how they were to conduct themselves. He made sure that they were prepared for the battle that lies ahead. Today, as I look at my life, as I look at the life of the world, horror is the sanctuary. Horeb is the place where I come every Sunday and I see the happy and familiar faces and we sing worship songs and we clap our hands and we made a break bread at the end of the service. Horeb is the big mama's house. Horeb is that place of comfort. Horeb is the job that I don't want to lose. Horeb is the relationship that has brought me comfort that I forget before I had it. God called me out of something. So it was here that as the children of Israel came out of Egypt and they got to know the Lord, that horror can be a trap. Mount horror can be a trap. The sanctuary can be a trap. As we found in COVID-19, we've been uh, told to shelter in place and many people don't know what to do with themselves when they can't get around or move forward into the ways that were familiar to them. So let me see the children of Israel as God says, it's time to move. You've been here long enough. They lit out and they got to the edge of the promise line. They got right there. They were one step away. Amen. They got within a, a year of having been out of Egypt. They lit out and they got to the edge of the promised land. They got right there on the doorsteps of the promised land. And then they got doubtful. When, we, when they begin to look at what God had called them into, when God says, I want you to go forth now, go and possess. There's no more conversation that needs to be had. I've done everything that we need to do. It's time now to go and possess. I need you to go and take hold of the thing that I have called you out of Egypt for. See, it's easy to get stuck in being called out of, but we forget that we're being called into. As a body of Christ, it's easy to remember what God has saved you from, but it's easy to forget that he has saved me for a purpose. See, I'm comfortable in the sanctuary. I'm comfortable in the safety of the smiling faces that I see every Sunday. But when God says, I need you now in the face of COVID-19 to step outside of your comfort, you have to step outside of the sanctuary. Church may not be the same as we remember it to be. I'm calling you out of the sanctuary and into ministry and mission. At that point, I'm uncomfortable. Lord, now you're pulling me away from the thing that I was delivered. I'm happy being delivered out of Egypt. If you don't do anything else, I'm okay. I'm no longer in Egypt. What do you mean I have to fight some giants? I'm not looking to fight any giants. Lord, I don't want to have to deal with grants. I don't want to have to deal with the other point of mine. Lord, I don't want to have to deal with starting a business. I lost my job. Where is my job? God said, you lost your job to gain a business, but that means I have some battles that I have to fight. The sanctuary is closed, but ministry is open. The world is looking for 90,000 people and counting have died. They have not been able to mourn. Funeral service are not what they used to be. Repast services are not what they used to be. 
people are contemplating suicide because they don't know how to move forward in this new world. And we have been placed as the city on a hill that cannot be hid. But if I refuse to move out of the sanctuary and to move into ministry, I will miss the promise that God has called or of us, it can be a trap because I don't want to focus on moving forward, but I just want to be delivered from. I don't necessarily want to go on to. Amen. There are giants in the world. This is why Paul tells us that we have to press. He says, I press forward towards the mark of the prize of the high calling. It's not an easy thing. I have to press. I have to pursue every day. We have to walk alongside and allow the Lord to use us as his army, as his ambassadors, as the light unto the world, as the support for those who are downtrodden. There will be food in the house. He said, let there be food in my house that those who are in need may come and find. But if we are unwilling to move beyond the sanctuary, if we are unwilling to move beyond church as we know it, if we are unwilling to move beyond simply being delivered from and not being willing to press toward the battle that leads to victory in the promised land, then we will be unable to fulfill the purpose that God has called for us. So the, the, the encouragement here is that it's not about the giants. It's not about the Lack. It's not about not having a job. It's not about being laid off. It's about the sufficiency of God. It's not about what I like. It's about the God that I serve. It's not about how big the task is. It's about how big my God is. And if I'm willing to trust him, though there may be battles, though it may seem daunting, though the, the road ahead may be something we don't understand, if we are willing to trust him and to be used for by him to go unto the least of them, to be willing to clothe those who are without clothes, to be willing to feed those who are hungry, to be willing to go to the prisons and visit in so doing we are serving Christ. If we humble ourselves, and allow him to continue to use us in that way, then we will see the promised land as God has called us to see it. I'm reminded of when we started our re-entry resource center. We were having a conversation amongst the leadership, and we were looking at the number of people that were going to be released just within our county and then within the state. And at that time, there were about 1,700 and county people slated to be released from the L.A. county jails alone. And then the number came that they were going to be upwards of 3,500 men and women who would be released from the California State Prison, or CDCR. And we know that many of those come back to the L.A. county area. And we began to look at what we could do as a church. We knew that we have a giving ministry already. How do we be of service? And so we began to think about different places where we could go and we could get grants. And who could give? Where would be resources? And we made the decision to start with where we had, what we had. We decided that we weren't going to wait for grants to come, but that in the face of 1,700 from the county and 3,500 from the state, we would do what we could. And so we're looking at 1,735, about 5,200 people, and we put together 15 bags. But those 15 bags represent our faith in God. Lord, right now, what we have today is the ability to put together 15 bags. And because of that faithfulness that we said we're not going to stop, we're not going to look at the challenge as being bigger than God, but we want to make sure the world knows that our God is bigger than any challenge before us. It wasn't long that 3,500 kids were delivered to us. It wasn't long. Every time we checked the mail, there'd be a check. Every Wednesday when the church sanctuary was open, somebody would come by and drop off $20 and $50 and a pack of toilet paper and a pair of socks. And before we know it, the sanctuary, if you saw it now, is filled with items because as a church, as a congregation, we decided 
our God is bigger. It's time for us to move beyond horror. It's time for us to see how do we step out into the world and say, Lord, we trust you. Lord, we will continue to allow you to use us. We will not be afraid of the press. We will not be afraid of what they consider to be giants because our God is a giant slayer. He has promised us something. And so as a church, we will continue to press. After COVID-19 is over, we will continue to say, Lord, use us for ministry. We don't know what the world will look like, but we know our God is never changing. And we will stand firm. Lord, I don't know what my job is. Place you will be, but I know you are the provider, and so I will go forward and go forth, and I will trust you. I will bring my resources. I will present myself to you as a living sacrifice, and I will trust you to lead me into the, the thing, the land, the place that you have promised. I won't get comfortable and get complacent in that middle ground. I will remember. That although I rejoice over the fact that you have called me out of some horrible situations, you have called me to a purpose. I will remember that I have been bought with the price and that in, in being your child and being your servant, you have a purpose and a mission for me. I will move forward. I will press. Amen. I will press. I will pursue. The press means to pursue. I will continue every day to pursue that thing for which I am apprehended. I can call me for a purpose and we need to grasp the purpose for which we have been called. We will not be stuck. We will move beyond horror. Amen. As a congregation, as a world, we will move. We will join in the fight. We will not be afraid. It's I've been fighting, I've been, I've been fighting what's happening in our world. We still, in the year 2020, are being hunted as African Americans. We're being shot down. We're still uh, in our bedroom sleeping. The police are just shooting through windows and it's accepted and we march and we hold picket signs. But this cannot be where we are supposed to be. We, there has to be something. We have to move beyond horror. We can't keep doing the same old things. We can't keep circling the same old mountain. Something has to change. I can't keep showing up with big signs and then going home and the world doesn't change. This cannot be the mountaintop that Dr. King saw. This cannot be the victory that we're supposed to walk in when 2020 is still okay. We have to make noise and shake cages just to be Consider that our lives matter, that prosecution has to happen three months after the event because simply because we had to get rattled. Something has to change. We cannot continue to circle this long. We have to move beyond. We have to be willing to fight and to sacrifice. We have to be willing to be used by God as he sent Moses to deliver the people of Israel. He sent men and women now to deliver those who are in prison and justly. He sent the congregations. Are we willing to stand up and say, Lord, here we are, send us? Because something has to change. We cannot continue to circle this mountain as we have been doing. We cannot do it. It's not an indictment. It's not meant to be an accusation. It's an encouragement that there's something beyond. There's something better. There's something better than simply not being in slavery. It's slavery. He didn't call us just to mediocrity. That does not represent who's God. We serve a big God. And if I serve a big God, then I am a big person in the name of Jesus. There is more. We have to move on beyond this moment. And so we have a set of circumstances we're dealing with. COVID-19 and we get a chance to see that all is not what we thought. We get a chance to see how quickly life can change. We get a chance to see that I can be okay today in one order to shelter in place can disrupt everything as I do it. Bank accounts deplete, jobs leave, relationships fall apart, but God is never changed. He is ever present. He has promised to never leave us nor forsake us. So in this moment, as I close, the encouragement 
the encouragement is to move beyond that safe place of horror. Mount Horeb served its purpose. The way that we worship served its purpose. It allowed us to be prepared for the next level. But I would say that God is telling us now, the next level is here. It's time to get beyond the other room. The spirit has come and now it's time to go out and proclaim the word of God in all of the world. It's time now to look at ministry and how do we serve the needs of the community and not just tell them to come to church on Sunday, but Monday through Friday, what are we doing as a body to represent our Lord and our Savior? For the Bible says, if you if you know that I have need and you send me away and you told me to be well, but you didn't feed me, you did not minister unto me. Amen. So we're calling now. The encouragement now is that we begin to position ourselves, we begin to pray, we begin to ask the Lord, how do I move beyond my comfort zone? How do I move beyond that thing that has become that Mount Horeb, that Mount Sinai in my life? How do I move on towards the promises that you've laid before me? For I know that you have given me the strength to slay every giant that would come there will be giants. There's no way around it. There will be giants. For there were giants on the way to the promised land. Jesus dealt with his giants. The apostles dealt with their giants. There will be giants. But our God is bigger than any giant that we could ever face. So if you, in this moment, are realizing that I've been in this place in my life long enough, that I've settled for being comfortable. That I am doing better in my mind than my neighbor. And that has been the thing that has given me peace. But now I realize there's something better. There is more. There is purpose. God has a promise and a purpose that's beyond having a good job. That I've come to know him. Not just from what they taught me, not from what I learned in Sunday school, not from more of the stories that I've heard, but I'm seeing him in this moment for myself. And you realize that you don't want to stay at that moment, that you want to move forward and you want to walk with God into his holy promises. It's in this moment that we encourage you to pray. And we encourage you to confess, to make the confession that, Lord, I believe that you raised, were raised from the dead. I love you. I want you to come into my life. I want to walk with you. I want to understand what's beyond this mundane, what's beyond this mountain, but what really lies inside of me. What have you purposed me to do? It's now that you can pray and invite him in, and I promise you, he has promised us in his word that if we open the door, he will come in and suffer with us. And after you've done it, you have prayed, we ask you to contact us here at the church so that we may celebrate, we may walk with you, and we may enjoy this journey and move on to that